Hello everyone, I'm Angela of Fernlean Trowbridge. Today you're joining us for part one of our short cloak sew along. If you don't already own the pattern, you can purchase it through the link below. In this two part sew along, we will be covering the cutting and stitching of a short cloak, along with a bit of history and fabric choices. To make it easier, I'll be constructing our cloak in half scale to move us through the steps quickly. However, all of the instructions translate to your full-size pattern. If you would like a miniature cloak for your B&T mannequin, then print our pattern out at half scale. In this first part, we will cover choosing and gathering your materials, preparing your pattern, laying out your fabric, cutting out your pattern pieces. Before we get started making, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the short cloak, as well as the textiles that were commonly used to make it. Cloaks were a common outer garment worn by all social classes in the 18th century. Short to full length hooded, collared, and hoodless are all depicted in contemporary art and in museum collections. Typically, these cloaks were made of heavier woolens, such as broadcloth, and one of the most common colors were shades of red, from matter to a bright red known as scarlet. There were also other colors, not depicted as frequently, such as black, blue, drab, and more rarely green and purple. Through our study of original cloaks and contemporary art, we have concluded that the cut of a short cloak differed from that of a full length cloak. Short being classified as anything that did not go down to the ankle. Lengths could range from elbow length to just below the knee. Unlined has been the most common version of a short cloak we have found. Occasionally, we've found cloaks with a silk front facing and a silk hood facing, or a fully lined hood. If you would like the option of lining the hood, I'll show you how to do that later in the video. So with this information in mind, the cut and assembly methods we have incorporated into our pattern, and what I'll be sharing with you, are what we found to be the most common in extant garments. So let's get started. First, you'll need to gather your materials. Our pattern is designed for wool broadcloth. You might know it as coating or melton, the most common textile we have found cloaks made from. Although other textiles were used on occasion, using other textiles can alter the construction and sewing techniques. You can also elect to line your hood and if you like, also face the front of your cloak. We have seen both. Silk should be light to middleweight taffeta or a 12 woven silk called Persian in the 18th century. You'll need to gather your materials and the yardage you require will depend on the length you would like the finished cloak to be. Broadcloths range from 56 to 60 inches wide and have no nap. If you are using a wool with a nap, we have adjusted these yardages in the pattern for you. You can also ignore the nap, which was done in the 18th century. For a hooded knee length cloak, we suggest three yards and for one with collar, two and three quarter yards. For a hip length cloak with hood or collar, one and a third yards will do. For the silk lining of your hood, a half a yard. If you choose to face your cloak, you will need two lengths, the measure of the front of your cloak by two to three inches. As an alternative, you can use two inch wide taffeta silk ribbon or tape, which we have seen in originals. We will be using a silk quilting thread for assembly of our cloak, which is close to the weight and type of thread typically used on originals. You will also want just a small bit of either buttonhole twist or heavy carpet thread for part of the hood assembly. Finally, you will need your thimble, wax if you would like to wax your silk thread, pins and scissors. Now that you have all of your materials and tools, you will need to assemble your pattern following the instructions included. Before you cut out your fabric, you'll want to adjust your pattern for length. So I've decided to make a hip length hooded cloak. We have used standard lengths in our pattern for hip and knee length. So you will want to adjust that measure if necessary to suit you. Using a string, you can measure from the nape of your neck to the desired length. We are going to measure from the nape of the neck down to the hip. 
and let's get our pattern. All right, so we have a measure like so. Be sure you mark this length on both pattern pieces since this makes up the full body of your cloak. This mark is your finished length and it looks like we are straight on. One of the advantages of using wool broadcloth is that it can be cut raw and will not ravel. And you can see here how nice that edge is. This is a common practice in the 18th century and frankly saves time as well as reducing bulk. Now it's time to cut out our pieces. You will want to fold your fabric lengthwise, selvage to selvage, and then lay your pattern pieces so that the grain line is parallel to the selvage. And you can see here, we have a fold line and our grain line. You can pin or you can use weights and then go ahead and cut out all your pieces. Now, obviously, because I'm working in miniature, I've cut lots of extra fabric. And also, depending on the width of your fabric, you may not have to cut this piece separately. This piece goes right here to make up our full half circle when we're done cutting. Uh, but you can, if you have enough width, cut it in one. I'm going to go ahead and cut it in two so I can show you how it pieces together. Now that we have our pattern pieces pinned in place, we're going to cut out. Okay, now that we have our pieces cut out, be sure to mark where the pleat mark is on your hood also mark the center back on the cloak body. So your pleat mark is right here. I'm gonna make sure I get both sides. And then my center back. So folks, we now have our pattern pieces cut out and we're ready to begin construction, which we will be doing in part two of this sew along. So put your pieces in a safe place and we will see you for our next installment, where we will construct and finish our beautiful new cloaks. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to like this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for updates so you know when our next video premieres, and please leave us your comments or questions below. Also, be sure to find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, where we post daily and share your sew along makes. If you would like to be featured, be sure to tag us at Burnley and Trowbridge and use the hashtag showyourcloak.